Hey Lucky Charmers, how you doing today? Okay, so how do gays hustle in prison? Through the guys. <laughs> I mean, what were you expecting me to say? Obviously, they hustle through the guys. Um, but before I guess I just kind of like, you know, dive into that, I will share, there's some other ways, you know, for those select two that maybe don't, you know, use the guys, uh, just like anybody else. A popular way to hustle in prison is what? But anyway, but there are other ways, just like there, are, like for any regular person, there's a lot of ways to hustle in prison. Similarly, um, if I said that word right, gays, a popular thing that they do is sewing. Um, people need pockets, you know, in your, people want pockets in their sweatpants, in their shorts, sometimes in their state clothes, even though technically you're not allowed to alter state property, but people do it. Um, they, they get pockets made. Uh, the queens, they want their things to be, you know, super tight, uh, to look like a woman, you know, to try and be as feminine as possible. So a lot of gays do sewing. Another popular thing is, uh, Ironing clothes, washing clothes, working in laundry in general, and then also store boxing is like a major hustle um, in the jail and in prison. It's risky because what store boxing is, is when you loan something out to get double in return. For example, like a soup, you might give one soup out to get two back, or two for three, two soups out to get three back, or three for five. And then higher up in that, you kind of work with the person. Um, you know, if you want to, but the risk that you run is people, they get moved, they intentionally check into segregation, into the hole, um, that's what it's called, segregation, the hole, and, you know, you don't get paid or something like that, but w when it works out, and as you learn, you know, the people to deal with, it's very lucrative, um, you know, people have, like, I've seen boxes full, I've seen bags, like laundry bags, full of commissary. <laughs> These are people who are doing time, been down for a minute. But anyway, as as it relates to the gays, the queens, the girls, the boys, the punks, the gumps, <laughs> these are all the terms that they, they came up with, you know. Um, I just learned it. But anyway, as it relates to homosexuals, regardless, they're always working these guys, you know, because that's what the guys want. They want somebody to go down on them. They want um, the attention sometimes. Sometimes they just want the interaction with someone who's feminine, you know, that kind of can remind them, like, make, like, use their imagination and make believe that they talk into a woman. It's twisted, but it's prison. I mean, it's prison, you know, this is just, it's just the way that it is. Now, as it relates to me, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I'm laughing, to be honest with you. I'm just going to be straight up. I was not, I wasn't hustling the guys like I could have been. Um, honey, I could have had anything I wanted. <laughs> but it comes at a cost, you know. And when I first got in there, it was very exciting for me to kind of like think, you know, the attention. Thinking like, you know, oh my gosh, everybody wants to sleep with me and just give me anything. It was also overwhelming. It was a little bit scary at times, at a lot of times, because it was constant. It was, and it was like outside of my control. Like, it didn't matter what I do. It didn't matter if I was quiet. It didn't matter if, it didn't matter what I did. Like, literally, I could just walk into a pod and people, they start hooting and hollering and stuff, and I didn't even say anything. I didn't even, I didn't even walk in. Like, I've seen some queens walk in, you know, <laughs> doing the most, like, I wouldn't be like that. I literally would just come into a pod and people are just all excited. Like, you know, it was overwhelming at times. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Uh, there were times that I did, you know, utilize my um, position <laughs> to get what I wanted. And I'm not talking about always just like outright sleeping with people. I'm talking about like just flirting. A lot of times, sometimes, a lot of times, sometimes just the interaction would be enough for a guy to give you anything that 
you ask for, <laughs> which is so sad, to be honest, which is why I didn't actually really do it a lot, because the longer that I was in there, you know, I served three years, two years of that three years was in prison, and the more time that I was in there, two things kind of started to sink in with me. One is pity. I really felt really bad for these guys, like the desperation for attention, um, any kind of attention, was overwhelming. Like, um, people became possessive very fast and um, obsessive, oh my gosh, within a conversation. Like, they're, they're already kind of just, you know, so just overjoyed for this kind of, um, you know, just interaction, this kind of attention. It, it was really, it was really kind of, it was a lot, to be honest with you. And then the fact that so many queens, I feel like they kind of lose heart, I think, when they just abuse that. They just abuse it and use it to their advantage. And um, I didn't want to become like that. That was That's my second thing. My first thing is, like I said, pity. I felt bad for the guys. I really did, because it's just a sad situation. And then um, my second thing is I was nervous about corrupting myself because I, I would think to myself, I'm like, you know, one day I'm going to come out and what kind of person am I going to be when I come out if I develop a habit of using people like this and sharpen the skill, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would obviously, when you do that every day, every day, every day, every day, for even in a short time like mine, for two years, I would be really good at it. I would come out here and continue doing that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't want to be like that. I really didn't want to be like that. And my mom, thankfully, I had the luxury that my mother was sending me money every week and then towards the end like even every two or every week she was sending me money and then sometimes you know like i said towards the end it was like just every two weeks but it was enough where i could budget myself out and the times where i was able to use a guy like as far as they helped me get something or something like that um you know i took i didn't take advantage of it but uh I appreciated the help, I guess, you know, there was some sort of mutual, like, understanding, I guess you could say. I always tried to be, like, transparent with my intentions and where you stand with me. The reason why I started to shy away from it is because, like I said, in the beginning, it was kind of exciting. It was, it was new and it was kind of unbelievable to me, like, you know, the, the amount of power, I guess, that a gay person has in a place like that, especially somebody like me, I mean, come on, let's keep it real. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not, but, um, <laughs> it's like, I'm just kidding. I'm not that conceited, but it was just shocking, like, you know, how, uh, how much power these guys give the gay people, you know, in there, like, they just, just just cater to them, you know, um, for real. And you have some gay people that really manipulate that seriously well to their advantage. And a lot of people thought that I would become like queen bee, boss bitch, the best at it, but I didn't um, because it's not in my nature to be like that, for one. And then for two, in order to be on top, to be the best at that kind of hustle, you had to really be a, like a woman, you know, um, taking hormones, developing breasts, for example, or even if I wasn't developing breasts, for some, following all the rules, penitentiary rules, as it relates to being a homosexual. Um, I had a mustache. That is, that really messed with a lot of people's minds in there. They felt like, why do I have facial hair? I should be shaving it all off. Um, I used to pee standing up. I'm a guy. Why wouldn't I pee standing up? I mean, I'm sure that this is weird to hear this, but this is just what it was in there. You know what I'm saying? And that was, that made a lot of people uncomfortable to, be, to believe it or not. That actually really used to mess people up. Like it made people uncomfortable. They, they felt that I should be peeing sitting down and I was 
doing, by peeing standing up, it was like I was intentionally trying to shock people, you know, or, or mess with people um, in some kind of way. Because it's like, you're, you, you appear to be this way, so why aren't you behaving in that way? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're, you're breaking the rules. I even had queens that would tell me that. They'd be like, you know, you're, they, the code, that's what they would say. They'd be like, you're not following the code. I'm like, who said that I had to? I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm a gay guy. I'm a guy that likes guys. And if you like me, it's because you like guys. I'm not changing that for you. Especially in prison. What do I care? What do I care? You know what I'm saying? So that's one reason why I wasn't good at it. Because they wanted me to be a woman. They wanted me to not have a mustache. To sit down while I pee. All of this garbage. You know, like literally act like a woman and think like a woman and you know be a woman and all that stuff and it's insulting first of all to women i think to have some gay guy pose as your replacement you know what i'm saying and then what the hell for example there's things that frustrated me when i would exercise the simplest things like doing sit-ups or something like that squats even or whatever people would just be blown away that I'm exercising. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what does that even say, your thoughts on women? Women exercise, you know? Or like if I would be moving into a new cell and I'm carrying my mat up the stairs or something, people, they would just be, you know, watching just to see, like, can't believe I do it. And I would have guys rush over to help me carry my mat and stuff. I, towards the end, I would just let them idiots do it. Like, I would just think to myself, I'm like, okay, well, hey, I, I don't have to do it, so <laughs> whatever, you know, and you look like a fool to me, helping out a guy, you know, I'm clearly capable of doing it, but then in my head, I'd be thinking, and what is it, your thoughts on women is that you just think that they're just, they can't do anything, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, just, that was, that was a major reason why I wasn't good at being the best at hustling guys, because I refused to fall into this insane concept of thinking of myself as a woman and trying to be a female replacement for you you know what i'm saying for the guy two you had to be a little bit heartless to even do that because like i say because the desperation that these guys would have for this interaction you know and you just abuse it to get commissary or favors or um whatever you know whatever you you really kind of had to become heartless. And those queens in there became cold-hearted <sighs> hoes. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I knew I'd be corrupt. At the end of the day, I would suffer. I would be corrupting myself. You know what I'm saying? And then my third reason, and then I'm finished, is um, in the beginning, it was kind of exciting, like, and mind-blowing that this is the way that it is and that I'm just given this type of power. Like, I don't even have to work for it. It's just handed to me all the time, every day, all the time. But then over time, day after day after day after day after day, it became so exhausting. It became so exhausting because no matter what I would do or how I would break these rules or whatever, it was my only value. It was my only worth to these people. And it really used to kind of like beat me down sometimes because I would think to myself, I'm like, dang, these people, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. This is the only thing, the only reason why these people interact with me. And even sometimes when you would click with someone that maybe initially they weren't seeking that from you, that kind of companionship or, you know, um, encounter, you know, a sexual encounter or something, um, over time they still would want it because, because of the pressure from the other guys, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I guess like how it puts them out there just being around me. So then it's like they feel like they should get some sort of reward for clicking with me like this. Or I guess just because of the mere fact that they click. Like then maybe initially they didn't think that they'd be interested. But now that they're like, you know, realizing it's like, oh, you know, it's this person, this kind of person isn't as bad as I thought. Maybe I would be into it. And then they start trying to get that from you. And it would just piss me off for one and then sometimes just really like beat me down because i'm like dang i'm not even valuable as a person like you had so many people other just regular guys in there where they were just cool with with just guys you know but it's like but for me you know even if you're cool with me this is just my value so i could see where like the queens became cold-hearted you know 
at it. But what ended up happening is there would be two types of queens, gay guys or whatever. The cold-hearted hoes who just did it with anybody and everybody, even if they had men or something like that, like a husband is what they call it. Um, they would have their pieces on the side, trade, community trade, or whatever, just to get what they need, you know? Um, and then you had the people like me who didn't speak to anybody. There were people in there like that. They just, you just don't talk to nobody. Even if, even if somebody talks to you, you just don't respond. Like, literally, you just don't speak, you know? Because even just the mere interaction would send people the wrong message where, in their mind, they immediately, um interpret that as interest and that used to piss me off too because i'm like gosh i don't want nothing from you you know but just even i got to the point where i would look down all the time like now i'm talking about while walking now when i walk i look forward obviously you know you walk looking straight ahead but in there i got in the habit of when i'm on the rec yard i would look down um walking to chow i would look down because, and people, they would say something all the time. They'd be like, why are you looking down all the time when you when you walk? Why don't you ever hold your head up, hold your head up, or whatever? And I, that always, like, confirmed for me. I'm like, yeah, see, I'm not holding my head up. Because something that I started to notice is because people were looking at me all the time, <laughs> and it, I, because people were looking at me all the time, which it used to drive me crazy. That's what I was going to say before. Um, I just had to calm myself down. Um... I would look down because I noticed that even just something as simple as eye contact would send somebody a, a message of interest in some kind of way. So then later, maybe it wasn't today, maybe it wasn't even tomorrow, it could be a week later, it could be a month later, but they remember that. And then later when the opportunity comes up in church or in the chow hall or you know, suddenly you you taken up a trade and you just happen to, you, I would have, I took hold of culture while I was in there. That's a trade, a skill to learn. I would have people taking that class after I got in there because they were just trying to get a way to, to meet me. That's how it is in there, you know? Um, yeah, so that's just why I didn't do it. But the point of this video is that is the number one way that gay people hustle to survive in prison is through the men. and. That, Girl, I'm here to tell you, and sad to say, that it is all too easy to do it in there. <laughs> it is too easy. And these people out here that make it sound like, you know, the gays are, I don't know, strange or something like that in there? No. It's a lie. The gays run the place, practically. The gays and the gangs. Those are the, the people that really run compounds. Um, yeah. But anyway, to become an official Lucky Charmer, make sure to hit subscribe. Love you. Have a great day. <laughs>